I purchased my first uh, PPR back in 2007 um, and um, first home owner's grant at the time um, and was fortunate enough to uh, also save a deposit for my first investment property back in 2010. Um, went through an investment broker at the time and purchased out in uh, the outer western suburbs of Melbourne. You're listening to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard. and welcome to Property Investor Tales, Tales from the Front Yard, where we get to speak with people across Australia about their property journey. My name is Vicky Hines and I'm one of the coaches at Positive Real Estate, where I help people build wealth through property. With over 8,000 clients across Australia and New Zealand, there are some amazing stories to tell, which hopefully will help make your investing journey just that little bit easier and will help inspire you along the way. Today, I have the privilege of speaking with Justin and Sylvia Ridgway. Justin and Sylvia have been invested in real estate for 13 years, but have only have been the most active actually over the last few years. Um, they joined Positive Real Estate back in 2020, back in the COVID days. I've asked them to come along to the podcast today to share some of the knowledge that they've acquired along the way and the learnings that they've experienced, which should help people just starting out as well as some that are already halfway through their investing journey. Enjoy this conversation between myself, Justin and Sylvia. Hi, Justin and Sylvia. How are you today? Uh, well, thanks, Vicky. Thanks for joining us. No, yeah, good, thanks. Uh, good to be here. Slowly winding down for the holiday period. Yes, awesome. I think by the time this goes out, it will be the holiday period. But at the moment, it's just before Christmas and we're all getting very excited for some much needed time off after a, a big year. A very big year indeed, you can say that again. We're going to talk about your year, <laughs> certainly today. <laughs> So, guys, you've been with a Positive Real Estate since 2020, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. We joined back in uh, mid-2020, um, probably in the thick of the, uh, the COVID pandemic. At, uh, and um, I suppose we've benefited ever since with education and uh, and, uh, and learnings. Awesome. So, so we were yeah, all- at that point in time, wasn't it? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, it's very much how it's happened. <laughs> yeah, being uh, in Melbourne and under harsh lockdown. So, yeah. Yeah. Is that time for me? Yeah, we certainly did. We, um, yeah, we. I was in Melbourne as well, and it was very much, um, you know, we had the time to really concentrate on investing. And I know you guys certainly took up the mantle and invested some of your your time back then to really get get to grips with all this stuff. So, when did you begin investing? Was this your first foray into it, or was there something before? Um, well, look, I'll, I'll probably. Uh... For a bit of history, uh, I purchased my first uh, PPR back in 2007 um, and um, first time owner's grant at the time um, and was fortunate enough to uh, also save a deposit for my first investment property back in 2010. Um, went through an investment broker at the time and purchased out in uh, the outer western suburbs of Melbourne. So uh, that was... Uh, with my foot in the door with the investment journey. Yeah. And is that where you're from? Is that one of the main reasons that you invested out there? Uh, yeah, certainly local. We're both Western suburbs, <laughs> Metro Melbourne, so that was uh, nice and local. And at the time, I uh, wholeheartedly probably uh, was led to purchase my first investment property, uh, probably uh, lack of better judgment at the time, but uh, that's that's the uh, the legacy I've, I've got at the moment with the first property. Yeah, but you obviously, you know, you you took the, the the sort of you know the mantle and you ran with it, and you went jumped into your first investment. At what must have been, you know, quite nerve wracking back then. Um, what prompted you to invest back then? Was it something that you were told by your by family, by friends? Was everybody around you doing it? Why did you originally invest? Um, look, I I dare say I probably had a little bit uh, extra cash flow and. Uh, yeah, I wanted to invest in my future and invest in a property, and uh, was uh, sold a bit of a, a vision. And I, I did want to look long term at the time, but uh, I was a bit uh, green and a bit young. Um, but a bit of a leap of faith at the time to uh, jump in the investment property uh, spectrum. Right. Okay, Sylvia, was you involved in this investment? Um, look, um, at that point in time, we were very fresh <laughs> um, in our relationship and um, I guess, you know, Justin was a little bit further ahead 
in terms of um, significant milestones. But me as a partner at that point in time witnessed everything. Um, I did come along with you to meetings and seminars and just listened in. Um, and, I yeah, I was there that day when you did sign the cheque over for the um, the house and land package and, it was. Uh, I wasn't even signing it, and I was nervous. And um, yeah, and even during the what was it? Oh, I can't remember now. Like the eighteen month process, the, or the the build, the, 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 the build, and the, and, the, and, the, and the titling of the block and so forth. Yeah. And then even the aftermath of it, you know, I was a, a complete witness there, and I was a bit taken back. Like, oh wow, is this what it's like every single time? Wow. Um, it, it was enough to sort of. Go, oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> there, there, there was a lot of paperwork, a lot of signing and uh, um, finance, and I didn't really understand it at the time. Um, and I suppose back then, once I saw, signed up and purchased the house of land, um, that support just dried up. Um, once the bill was underway, all, all my broker support and, and guidance um, went away, and I, I had to to deal with that um, pretty much on my own. That's, that's pretty nerve-wracking stuff because, you know, since then I know that you guys have lived through a, a, another build and we all know how important it is to have a holding, you know, have a handheld throughout that period because it can be quite stressful and lots of things can change and, you know, somewhat deviate from the original plan that we're going to talk about in a moment. But back then you must, like, like we all were, you must have been quite younger and not been through that experience before. And if you felt that your your support network had kind of dried up a little bit and you were on your own, that would yes. be very, very hard to get through. So how did you cope with that? Did you find other well, I say, members? I was going to say with my age, um, not only was it daunting for me to uh, take so much responsibility, but um, the builder in question um, there's a lot of defects that were outstanding. So the property wasn't presented as well as it could have for, um, for tenanting and ended up in um, building commission arbitration. Um, so that added, added more stress and more burden to uh, uh, managing uh, builder and, and builder poor performance. Um, and I had to, to do all that on my own pretty much. So that was uh, quite a confronting a negative experience at the time. Yeah. So you didn't have the support even when it got to that stage or going through no. the mission? No. Oh, look, I was, I was fortunate. I was good with my documentation, but aside from that, I have to do all the wheeling deal with the building commission and the, the build at the time. Wow. Yeah, that's a pretty stressful experience for anybody, let alone a first-time investor, relatively young. Um, and is that one of the reasons why you had a bit of a gap between your first investment and your second investment? How long was it? Um, first and second investment was, uh, I would say, seven or eight years. Right. Um, and look, and, and also the vision that I saw back in 2010, um, the rent increase, the capital growth, as in a new housing estate, but none of that really eventuated um, wow. for many years. It did in the end. It, it, you know, we were um, able to get equity and, and, and capital growth, but that was... Uh, five, seven years uh, past the, uh, the purchase uh, yep. the purchase year. A lot of very stagnant, very uh, um, disappointing that we had a, a, a bit of a real estate limit that didn't really perform for us. Did it um, really match what was happening in the rest of Melbourne? This is in the outer west. Is that correct? Yeah. Right? And yeah. So this was a period of what, 2012 by the time it was finished, 2013? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, and very high vacancy rate as well. A lot of other estate stages buildings as well. So it's uh, there was a there's a, a flood of um, similar type properties on the market which didn't right. help things. They really settled down a bit. So yeah, but there was other areas in Melbourne that were doing quite well around 2014 yeah. time. I yeah. recall that myself. Right. So that would have been a bit disheartening that you watch other areas gaining capital growth and you felt like you've been through all of that. Yeah. And you wasn't even rewarded with that. Um, well, well done for going going again <laughs> after that experience, even if it took a while, which is totally understandable. Um, let's let's fast forward a little bit. So 
going towards when you joined Positive Real Estate back in 2020. So when you joined, I recall when I first met you, you both had very stable jobs. You were keen to learn, as you said, that you were at home. <laughs> we all were. And um, you were keen to get really stuck into some of the educational stuff and watch some of the webinars, watch people like Dr. Andrew Wilson, the property economist who comes along, teach us about what he could see happening in the market, which was actually quite different to what we were hearing from the media. He was very buoyant, wasn't he, about capital growth coming and um, very, very different from the 40% drops, the headlines. So back then you had stable jobs. Tell us about what happened from them. Well, first of all, what was your first property that you uh, you put in a, a expression of interest on? Tell us about the first one, and then we'll talk about your journey. Yeah, sure. Okay, so a um, bit of a funny story on the first um, expression of interest that we put in. So um, I remember specifically looking at the pre-Facebook page on the the deals that were on at the time. And Wyndham West kept on coming up. I'm like, oh, wow, well, look at look at this deal. It's a, um, a, a property on its own title. Um, it's a house of land. It's, it, it was just ticking all the right boxes for the, I guess, the low risk we wanted to take as like a joint property. And, um, <clears throat> and um, I think in the lead up to that, another property came up in Cannon Hill and it was already settled. And, again, that was ticking all the right boxes, but I think mentally, I mean, we both had mutually agreed Wynnum West was definitely a goer. Anyway, we were still interested in the Cannon Hill property and it must have been fate that we ended up submitting the EOI using the Wynnum West link for Cannon Hill and as a result, we ended up missing out on Cannon Hill. Yeah. So, yeah, big fate, um, uh, yeah, big believer of fate that all roads led to Wynnum West. Yeah, <laughs> extraordinary yeah. as well with Wynnum West. Yeah, we were very happy. Um, look, we didn't know much about Brisbane, but we felt that through the, um, the amount of detail that Positive Real Estate provided us, we actually got to know Brisbane through the documentation mm. Um, and the um, uh, the what's the document called again on the um, investment report? Yes, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So we actually got to learn about Brisbane and where the suburb was and the um the um the demographic. Um, and it was almost like we were actually there. <laughs> we were actually weren't. Um, so I guess yeah, it all ticked the boxes. Um, and at that point in time, like, I guess another reason why we didn't act sooner on another property was that I guess we didn't have the knowledge or the know-how or the tools to understand that we've built this great bubble of equity from property number one, but we yeah. didn't know how to unlock it. Right. Um, because I guess the, the team that we had at that point in time, um, they were great, but you know, they were quite, I guess, time poor um, and we couldn't just make a call and say, hey, yeah. how do we, we got this deal, we need to act fast, yeah. how do we access that equity? I yeah. guess that that support wasn't there. So um, yeah. I guess, you know, yeah, through positive, it worked out quite quickly that, you know, in a matter of a week, we knew what our position was and whether we could go ahead yeah, with the West. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, Vicky, you you were part of that. Um, you know, realizing all those um the, the potential that was there. Um, so yeah, we went ahead with it, and um, yeah. I think we got option number two. Uh, out of Win and West. Oh, oh, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, it's a long time ago. Yeah, they all did well. And they were very And um, I guess I know between yourself and Amanda, we would ask, we would ask, oh. What property should we pick? And I think the 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 advice is always stuck in the back of my head. You buy the best that you can with the money that you got. Yeah. Um. Yep. So buy that might the be... best real estate you can <laughs> when you can. That's my motto. Yes, that, yes. <laughs> so you know, it might mean like because it's the age old question like, oh, do you buy a four bedroom house and spend more, or do you and go over budget, 
um, and feel constrained or do you go with a two-bedroom house or two-bedroom apartment because that's the best that you can afford at that point yeah. in time. So, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, so, so no, we let fear yeah. stop you is basically what, what the rule of the game is. Um, you know, if yeah. you can afford a four-bedroom house but you go for a two-bedroom apartment just purely as a fear, that's not yeah. the best way to invest. Yeah, and I think no, you correct, guys correct. absolutely listened. You were and still are very, very coachable, which is... <laughs> dream for a coach and um yeah the um obviously the the proof is in the pudding you've, you've done well and we will talk about your results in just a moment um so that was great you you eoi'd on that property which originally was the the wrong one but it ended up being the right property and then so that, that started back in 2020 and the expectation was it was going to take how long it was going to be a nine month build <laughs> And, and uh, <laughs> um, we were there this year. Uh, what, 24 months? Yeah, About at least 24 months. months. Yeah. 20 and, months. Um, yeah. and um, you know, yes, it was very frustrating. But then as part of, you know, being a, um, a pre-deal, yeah. um, under the, con the contract conditions, we were paid a substantial amount of, um, of damages. Um, yeah. Liquidated damages, damages. Um, which price as well, yeah. a fixed price. So yeah. that was instant equity. <laughs> yeah. wow. So that's because yeah. your build time went considerably over, as most builders were experiencing right. delays yeah. at the yeah. time. So no fault of their own. There was plenty of shortages in the, the logistics space. Um, and yeah. Space. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I heard, and I knew about it, and I was aware about it. But like when you sort of like have made that decision you just want it to come to fruition it was yeah. just like waiting, waiting, oh waiting. the waiting game the waiting yeah. game so yeah. um but you know through those delays um we ended up getting out the, the frame upgraded to a still one yeah. at no additional cost because of the timber shortages right so you know that's another tick yeah. um and um yeah look overall it was delayed but we did get those liquidated damages and um, when he, oh, I think it was a week and a half, two weeks of it being listed um, for for rent, it was um, yeah, it went straight away. It went straight away yeah. at our asking price. Yeah. There was no questions asked yeah. about it. Fantastic. So it, it was all it was worth it. It was a long run that deal. <laughs> years. Yeah, yeah. It it was because a lot of the time you're like, oh wow, we've just brought this and we've never seen it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, and then when we actually physically saw it and were able to walk through, it, we were like, oh wow, yeah. okay, check it all out. Yeah. I can I understand it. It's real. I can touch it. <laughs> so you, flew up, <laughs> you flew up to Brisbane. Yeah, 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 Fantastic. yeah. 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 Specifically did. to see Wynnum West. Yeah, yeah, and the other um, um, investment yeah. property that we brought. Um, in yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did a bit of a trip to see them in person. Bit yeah. of a recce. Fantastic. So <laughs> well done on Win and West. That was a fantastic result. Do you care to share what the result was before we talk about the other one? The bank value. Yeah. Um so our final purchase price was six six seventy. No, no, that was less. I think it was six. Oh, sorry, six fifty. Well, maybe it was six seventy. Six seventy. Somewhere around there. Yeah. 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 I'm pretty sure it was like 672 or 73. Yeah. And um <laughs> and then um as part of the settlement we um had to get it valued and it came yeah. through at, at 1.025. Amazing. Absolutely. So those two gone. years, as you said, yeah. you know, it was frustrating at the time, but it actually yeah. translated into capital growth because you were all the while the build was taking longer and longer. You, your property was appreciating. The land was appreciating because yeah. it coincided with that Brisbane boom that had been, you know, it had been a long yeah. time <laughs> waiting for, but it eventually yeah. came and you made such a lot of money. So for a bank valuations, so banks are typically conservative. Um, for them to value the property at that much over purchase price is absolutely phenomenal. It was just amazing. You did so, so well. And, you know, I think I was mentioning just before we started recording was you, know, you was pretty calm throughout the whole period. And, you know, you had a few hurdles to jump, big hurdles to jump throughout the period that we'll talk about in a moment. But 
you were calm and you, and I didn't really hear too much complaining about how long it was taking. I'm sure you had yeah. it in private, but it, <laughs> you never really voiced it to me. And, and you know, it, good things come to those who wait. Patience is key. And, yeah, yeah. And I guess, you know, the other thing that was we were very fortunate at the time, we had this amazing interest rate. Yes. <laughs> yes. So it was like, yeah. oh, okay, yeah, all right, it's fine. Oh, it's um, yeah. So I guess... We didn't have that, I guess, you know. The whole, the whole costs yeah, the holding yeah. costs were yeah. quite fine at that yeah. point in time. Yeah. Um, so that was helpful as well. But, of course, you know, as all those fixed-term interest rates came off um, the, earlier this year, yeah, yeah, we came to realise, you know, oh, wow, okay, yeah, it's come through. But, yeah, you, you know, um, when you look at the paper value, um, yeah, just that. Yeah, just to see that on paper to say, wow, you know, we made we invested this much, and look what it's coming through us at the moment. So, yeah, yeah positive. So tell us about <laughs> the next one. How long after the first EOI did you eat EOI on the next one? Oh, was that about eight months, or was that oh, yeah, something, yeah, something like, like that? that? Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't. It, it wasn't it, straight away. No. It wasn't straight away, no. but it wasn't that long out no. either. Um, so I think yeah, it was somewhere between the, I would say six month period. Six, yeah, six eight somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, the 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 property in Arana Hills. It was um, it's a it's a townhouse, and um, there'd been a lot of attention at the fact that um, the the approval rate for townhouses beneath the Brisbane vicinity were at a low low more time low yeah. more time low and potentially they weren't going to do anymore. anymore correct. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah. So we definitely said, well, okay, let's have a look at our position. Can we do it? Can we finance it? Um does it make sense? It doesn't um, doesn't meet our strategy as well. Yeah, and yeah. does it yeah, exactly. It doesn't meet our um strategy. Yeah. And, um, yeah, decided to jump in that, you know, as well. So having two properties yeah. being, um, going through all of that, yeah, I don't know, pretty yeah. crazy. <laughs> well, well, I mean, the, we had to do to, to keep, keep uh, us, us busy. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was, you had two properties in Brisbane, which sometimes, you know, it is a bit of a double dip, but oh, first of all, Brisbane was on a massive growth curve and we could already see that. Secondly, it was a different type of property. It was a townhouse. The yield typically is slightly better. I mean, I believe Arana Hills has some amenities on the complex. Does it? Um, uh, it I think, no, uh, not like, no, I think it's just, yeah, nothing significant. I mean, like, not, it's not a pool or anything like that. No, okay. no but it's a, I guess, a, a, a community. Yeah. Um, where they've got your townhouses, and then they also have residencies, yeah. Um, yeah. which are other, I guess, level on top of um to the townhouses. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, no real amenities, but there is a body corporate there. Yeah, just looking after the common areas, keeping it looking beautiful for tenants and people that own property there. But the main thing being, they're two different areas, two different parts of Brisbane aren't yeah. they so Arana Hills in the north um yeah. we'd call it middle ring I guess 12 13 k's from yeah, the, the so. yeah. and then you've got Wynnum which is close to the coast in the south south yeah the southeast so very different areas yeah which very much was why we went ahead it wasn't double dipping into the same demographic or the same area um yeah so how long did that one end up taking Arana Hills um, I think that was even though we signed that later, it took a lot quicker. But remember, that was also one contract as well, and it was one contract, it, so it, it, we it, didn't it, have to wait. It was quicker, yeah, yeah. yeah. So talk and, to us about the difference in finance for those two properties. So when did you go for the finance for the first one? When did you need to go for the <laughs> second one? <laughs> um, so with Win and West, because there was two contracts, yeah. it was a construction loan. Correct. Um and um uh it was yeah look it was it's the same type of hurdles um but yeah we've went on west because it was two contracts we had to get our finances settled at that point in time Correct. Yeah. before yeah you know, yeah much earlier so yeah. upon yeah. signing yeah 
um, the contracts, um, we had to get our finances settled. And when you're looking at, you know, our secure jobs, it was pretty much a breeze, just the usual paperwork. Yeah. Um, whereas around the hills, it was put a deposit on and, then, and, and wait till and wait until completion yeah. to settle the property. So work out your finances. And that's where it became quite interesting um, for, for us. Um, <laughs> That's a very yeah. mild way of saying it. So you had yeah. a gap between when you EOI'd, but I can't remember how long, to be honest. Was it two years it, or less? Um, so I think it was 2021. Oh, yeah, I believe so. And I think they commenced, yeah, it took a little while. Mid. No, even later. later I think it, or maybe it was. Mid to late. Yeah, I think it was yeah. mid, yeah, yeah. Because then um, they'd already started to clear the land and start, you know, doing all the, um, the site prep. Yeah. yeah, site prep. And I think they started to lay some foundations and the developer came to us and said, listen, um, with all the increased costs of um, materials and labour and so forth, um, their, finance, um, their, fi or their bank had said to them, you need to try and raise some extra capital. Yeah. Um, wow. What was that correct? Yeah, we're through very fixed cost contract. Yeah, and so that came. We had to vary yeah, the the contract. It was reasonable. Right? It was, yeah, it, was reasonable. It, it wasn't yeah. like hundreds of thousands of dollars. No. Um, they were asking for an extra twenty thousand yeah, dollars. Right. We, you know, at that point, yeah, naturally you're like, oh god, another twenty grand. Is this going to work out? Um, does it make sense to go ahead? Yeah. Um, and again, you know, going back on the facts about townhouses, the quality of the build, where it was, um, twenty thousand dollars in the scheme of things was nothing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we to proceed anyway. Um, and I guess the other challenge when it came to settlement was um. Yeah, I had um. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So on my career, in terms of my career, um, I had been in a very stable job for about thirteen years, um, and I decided to take a leap of faith, <laughs> um, and I went to work for an online um startup company who had experienced phenomenal growth, um, during COVID. Um, they were a furniture company. Uh, I won't name them. <laughs> this is um, mid mid contract, so you'd yeah, you, you still had yeah. to settle Arana Hills. Yeah, yeah. So this is December, and already the developer was saying, "Yeah, we're we're close. We're yeah. this close to <laughs> to, settle. <laughs> to settle." So start, you know, start your yeah. engines. Um, and yeah, I was and the company. So my employer went bust. Um, yeah. about a week or two out from it was this from, time this year, um, Christmas, yeah. from Christmas yeah. um nice. yeah everyone lost their jobs um and <laughs> and um yeah I w and we started to think oh my gosh how are we going to settle this contract yeah um how are we going to um demonstrate that you know, I you got the income um, we've got yeah. the income streams and so cool. and interest rates have gone up considerably yeah. so it was a little bit harder yeah. to get lending as from exactly what it was yeah. previously so you had that double whammy as well yeah yeah fees became super tight um and i just remember um sitting with our broker just rerunning the numbers over and over again and saying hey how about run this scenario uh what if we put in an extra amount from our equity loan and made the loan you know 82 percent 84%. It was literally 1% changes to see. We, we wanted to avoid financial scrutiny. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and to yes. see that the options we've got to uh, minimise our risk. Yeah, yeah. And um, and at that point in time, of course, December, January being super slow on the employment yeah. market, um, that, you know, typically who's hiring in December, January? Right. Well, not a lot of people or right. places. I um I had applied for a role um centralized in Ballarat, um so it was going to be an hour drive, and I decided to take it, um because we had the monkey on our back. Yes. About how we're going to show the bank 
Mm. Should they ask to see our statements, how are we going to demonstrate to them that, you know, no, we're financially secure, et cetera, et cetera. So I decided to take that roll up and I think it was like two weeks of me being there, we got a call from um, our broker saying, hey, guess what, guys, your loan's been settled. Yeah. What a relief. (laughs) But, you know, may I say, you guys were pretty calm throughout that period. I mean, I remember Amanda telling me what had happened. And then so I set up a meeting with you and expecting, you know, because many people would be slightly chaotic with their thinking and needing calming down. But you guys were pretty, uh, it's okay. We're, oh, I'll find some. Oh, of me you were. Yeah, Hats off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we put on a pretty good front. Yeah. I think in between us. Yeah. Um, that's we why. Like, what's the worst that's going to happen? And, yeah. and again, like when we step through the decision-making process, like pros, cons, like what if we can't settle, what are we going to lose? Well, um, potentially, potentially it could be this amount, yeah. but we know that, um, you know, through pre, yeah. the property will become available yeah. and then someone else could obviously um, settle it. And, and we'll have that safety net through pre and, and uh all the experts to go look if, if things are uh, turn pear shaped that we're not uh, we're not high and dry on our own. Yeah, not on your own. Like yeah, you felt that you were previously when you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We obviously try and do everything we can, but yeah, so so glad that you managed to get that job, even if it wasn't ideal in Ballarat. And um, <laughs> I think you mentioned it didn't actually end up being a greater job. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I was. I just thought to myself, "What am I doing here?" Once we got but yeah, you go. Oh, I've got to get I'm, I, I'm done. <laughs> oh, and I'll never forget getting that phone call saying, "Yeah, loan settled. Yeah. It's all good." Um, and then I think it was a couple of days later, I got a phone call from a recruiter saying, "Hey, what are you up to?" Um, wow. and yeah, Funny. yeah, and it moved pretty quickly. So it was a very happy day when I called that place that I'm out of there. <laughs> It was like a rebound. <laughs> yeah. So what happened? You, you got another job pretty easily. Yeah, easy. yeah. So um, you know, yeah, got um offered a position um when he a um an agricultural company. He's still in logistics and um yeah, back in Melbourne. So yeah, my sanity back. <laughs> um because yeah, I, you know, agriculture may not sound fun and exciting, but because it's so fast moving, um, that pace is what I missed. Whereas that job right. I had originally accepted, it was in a very secure market. There were market leaders. It was just so slow <laughs> and boring and monotonous. It just, yeah, it just wasn't me. Yeah. Yeah, and then, and then you found this other, job, this other job found you, to be fair, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, it did, it did. The universe so. was certainly looking out for you and guiding you back on back Yeah, on yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, and now you've got your two, well, you've got your three properties. So you're part of 1% Club, which is yeah, no yeah. Beat. Not everybody reaches that. So the 1% Club, if anybody doesn't know, is where um, the, our most successful investors are, three or more properties, in, is literally 0.69% of the population that that encapsulates. So you're part of that. So congratulations. That is an awesome feat. Um, and, yeah. certainly, and certainly wasn't easy. <laughs> no, definitely not. But I don't think it's ever meant to be easy um, at all. So I guess, you know, I had my bad days. Justin did too. No, of course. And then we had our good days as well. Yeah. So it was just always communicating and talking between yeah. each other to say, so oh, I'm this is a great, should we have yeah. done this? Yes, we should have because look at this, look at that. Um, so that's always very important that, you know, it's you need to keep talking. how you felt. That was a big part of it, not keeping it bottled up because it would have been stressful. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Keeping it yeah. bottled up is quite often worse, isn't it? So you really felt relieved by, you know, if you were having a bad day and, you know, thinking yeah. the worst, sharing it with each other and the other one would do the job of propping the other one up and then you'd move on. Exactly. True. Exactly. Oh, fantastic. That's awesome. So you've got quite the tale to tell, tales over the last couple of years. And obviously prior to that in investing, I think um, 
you are certainly examples of not having a, a, a relatively straight line journey. Nobody does in property, no. but you guys are still smiling. You've come out with awesome results. I mean, your portfolio value has jumped significantly over the last few years. Um, I presume you've got some learnings that you, you that you could perhaps share with somebody either starting out or is midway through their journey. What have you learned that you think you could um, perhaps um, encourage other people to either learn from or have a think about whether it would actually um, help them move along in their journey by thinking a little bit differently? And if any anything you can share, I'll probably say uh, over the years we've we sort of learned uh, not to listen to a lot of the noise in the media mm-hmm. um there's, there's a lot of noise there um and um pre and the support network the experts listen to the experts they listen to the media the um the uneducated opinions that are out there uh, of which there's many um and uh working with the experts to go through through run the numbers uh do your due diligence um if you're not comfortable Rerun the numbers again and again, and uh, mm-hmm. with the, the six star team at the pre, um, bounce ideas off your coach and the other experts to uh, to settle your nerves. Um, don't get too wound up in the the look and feel of properties. Make sure the numbers are sound, yes, and make sure those are, are considered. And uh, um, if there's any um, anything that you're unsure about this. There's a team to support you and to, to listen to you. Uh, you mm-hmm. need to be comfortable with those decisions um, in your own, um, in your own self, and don't be uh, don't uh, be afraid to jump on a property deal if numbers are right. Um, I suppose my view is that uh, I would have loved to have bought more properties when I was younger. So uh, time is, is of the essence. Um, yes. If you can afford it. Like we said before, if you can afford it, buy the best property uh, you can with the money you've got uh, as soon as you can. Yep. So would that be your um, bit of advice for perhaps somebody who is you? You know, 2010, you were starting out. If somebody have said yep. to you those words of wisdom that, you know, don't be fearful, start young, buy the best yep. property you can when you can. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Else? What about more of the nitty gritty stuff? Um, I know you guys are pretty organised with your numbers and, you know, collating stuff for your accountant. How important do you think that is in managing your portfolio now? Oh, it's so super critical. Um, I guess there's so many ways and to to maintain those numbers and not that way, the way that we maintain is not everyone's, you know, the way that everyone else might no. do it, but it works for us. Mm-hmm. And it's just, you know, it doesn't even take half an hour once a month putting right. all the numbers yeah. together, just lock away half an hour once a month. At the end of the month, whenever the statements come through, um, it doesn't take that long to maintain. So definitely um, I'm very electronic, innovating, having electronic systems, whereas Justin's very paper-based. <laughs> <laughs> um so, you know, that that's how I like to present it. And it's just the easy sheet, you submit it, and, yeah, it, all the home, all the work's done. Yeah, true. Um, so it's about keeping that routine um, to make sure that, you know, you don't let three months go past and then it becomes too hard to understand, yeah. oh, okay, what was my repayment for that month? What was, true, you know... True. Yeah. the agency fees for that month like yeah. just you can't let it slip away um and nitty-gritty i said su- i suppose it would be um you know no such thing as a silly question um i think the amount of time to run the numbers over and over yeah. and over again Different scenarios. And where's this where, what, yeah. what, what do you mean it's fifteen thousand? like where's this coming from i don't understand and um you know if it if you you know, we're, I think we're big believers of, you know, measuring twice, you need to cutting understand. once. Yeah, true. Um, and, you know, we're talking about fear. What's that fear about? Why are you so scared to do a deal? Yeah. Um, you know, and I think we were talking about it recently about, like, what drives that fear of, you know, um, 
getting into property investment. And I think it's all the 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 mystique and the um, you know bad stories that you hear. Um, and just because that was their journey doesn't mean that's going to be your journey. Yeah. Um, so and yeah, yeah, I think that, that's a little bit of like some advice and lessons and awesome I, I think um you've hit the nail on the head with the amount of time that you guys put into your your financials throughout the year and it's it's not that much at the time I think you mentioned like maybe half an hour uh, uh, Once a month. yeah that's it but it's so such a big thing and it's so impactful not only does it save you time at tax time because that's a no-brainer but what else it does it actually gives you clarity around what you're doing which remove fear to and it mm. gives confidence to move forward um you know I know some people aren't so organized with their financials and they don't know where they sit and so therefore a fear barrier comes up because that that's where fear comes from it's because they're confused and not quite sure on you know oh, I don't know how much mm. it's costing me now so I can't possibly do anything else whereas if you remove that you you will see exactly what you can do beyond that and it just it gets you looking forward rather than stuck in the moment and looking back. And I take my hats off to you because you've learned that, um, you know, I know you've been investing for a little while, but you've really, really ran with it over the last few years and not everybody does that. So well done. Um, what, what else would you say that you have um, perhaps built up in terms of investor muscle? Can you think of anything that you do a little bit differently um, now from what you did a few years ago for your through experience you yeah anything you can think of uh, look I'll, I'll probably probably say um over the last couple of years we've really tightened up our, our budgeting um oh, yeah. and i guess we we've been a lot more vocal about uh, optimizing our finance making sure we've uh, got the best interest rate shopping around uh making sure that our repayments are as low as they can be and I suppose we're um, a lot more regulating, checking in, making sure we're getting the best deal out there. Um, and that's something that we've, uh, we're always looking around, we're always researching, we're always uh, uh, probably enjoying, enjoying a bit of research that we probably wouldn't have done many years ago, yeah. just to see what, what the market is, what's what's correct in the media, what's false, what's uh, one area doing, what, what's another not doing. So, it, it, you know, a lot of that sort of research and fact finding, we're, we're doing a lot more of that than we did before. Well, we should mention that on a recent fact find on Rana Hills. So, um, with Rana Hills, when we got that evaluated, it came through a little bit low, but I guess at that point in time, there's still a lot of construction happening. At, mm -hmm. Um, then so sort of you know, um, because we the final price was like. 670 as yeah, well yeah, around that yeah thing. around that market. and it ended up coming through 700 but then um in this development where it is stage two for the exact same build yeah. it's coming it's starting at oh, high eight was it yeah or mid eight or so like eight fifty yeah. and um recently I was just mucking around on um real estate dot com and um, as you do, because you're always like <laughs> scoping it out, yeah. stalking. <laughs> and um, in the estate that um, the townhouse is in, one came up for sale. Oh. And I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. And um, we happened to meet the, um, the developer or a representative of the developer when we went up to Brisbane. And he's also a state agent. And he's a real estate agent at the same time. And we met him in person, lovely guy. Um, and um, I happened to drop him an email and say, hey, I noticed that unit blah, 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 blah is on sale. What's happened there? Um, how much is it going for? And he said to us, oh, look, that's the fire sale. Mm -hmm. um, so, and they, I think they ended up selling it for, Eight ninety five or eight no eight seventy five, and they, yeah. he goes, oh, it's funny you should ask because unit number blah blah is actually coming up for sale, and we're going to be pushing nine fifty. What did you pay for it? Um, six seventy. Yeah, six seventy. Yeah, you've done so well, <laughs> absolutely amazing. So we're waiting for. Um, I don't think the the property has sold no, yet. No, we're waiting for that. 
Yeah. We're waiting for that to happen and then we're going to ask our mortgage brokers to order a new valuation based on those two yeah. sales. Yeah. Lock, do you reckon? Yeah. 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 I guess that's where I get, you know, talking about um, investor muscle, hmm. there's no way I would have made a phone call like five years well, ago and said, oh, that. hi, um, mm-hmm. you know, that cold calling, like yeah. it's quite, you know, it can be quite daunting, conf- daunting to yeah. do. Um, but you know, always be nice. You never know who you meet and yeah. when you might need their help. Yeah. Um, because yeah, if we hadn't have gone that day and met that we, person, we, we would have had that that, that relationship, that relationship, or that um, you know, honest discussion yeah. about oh, we've seen that these properties up for sale. How much are they going for? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, definitely the confidence um has significantly jumped. Um and yet yeah, not afraid to say, well, no, I'm not like I'm not accepting that rate or you know, yeah. um, because I recently jumped on the um the phone to um to one of the banks with one of our loans yeah. and um I know you had a fantastic oh, oh, result. Yeah, one of our investment loans. Um, I, I rang up um retention team. I didn't even have to yes. negotiate. I got one point five percent interest rate drop. 1.5. And yeah. I, did, I didn't even have to, uh, to plead for it. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take it. Which bank was this? But, I don't know whether we should say um, was... I think that was, uh, CBA? I think it was CBA, Combank, yeah. Wow. That's significant. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Well yeah. done. Whereas, yeah, so we want the sales to go through. Oh, yeah. And then we'll order for an evaluation. Yeah. Because when I spoke to that lender, Claw Runner Hills, they were like, oh, you know, your LVR is still a bit high, so we're not prepared to really go all the way out. I'm like, all right, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens once those evalu- that True. evaluation comes yes. through yeah. and how they'll be, like, begging yeah. for us to stay, just to stay with them. Yeah, so. so well, exactly. But you guys are obviously very active. Even though you're not yeah. in a property deal, you're still very yeah. active in looking after the, the – you're getting the best – interest rate that you can you're already planning to get your equity out um yeah. which is what it's all about uh, i have no doubt that you're going to be able to move forward and really pivot from what you've created over the last few years which is what you need in order to complete your portfolio and finish the job so with that in mind do you care to share what the next few years plan is or it's up to you whether you do or not. But, yeah, we'd love to know if you've got any plans for the next few years or how many more properties do you need to complete what you've set out to do? Um, I'll, I'll say we're probably on the hunt for our, our third deal through pre, um, blue chip in Melbourne somewhere. Um, yeah, so keep it, yeah. Um, and, look, I suppose we re strategize and re-look at our, our position, our, our goals, what, what we've ticked off, which... Uh, I dare say it's probably light in our short time. Mm, definitely. Um, and, uh, <laughs> Before and, I let and, you go, we'll book appointment for next year. <laughs> yeah, so we, we come a long way in a short space of time. So yeah. we, we didn't uh, envisage any of this um, when we started out. And certainly I've, uh, I've been around the traps in, in, in some respect, you know, into motivational speakers, Tony Robbins and property gurus, et cetera, and... Uh, um, I kind of stumbled across pre and uh, um, have had no negative um, negative things to say about pre whatsoever. It's 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 a holistic. It's a, a whole team of experts around you. It's uh, um, it's not a get rich quick scheme. It's uh, you're in it for the long haul. Um, marathon, not a sprint. We, <laughs> sorry, it's a marathon, not a sprint, as Jason. Correct. Said. Yes. <laughs> and buy well, never sell. Yes, buy well, never sell, being the other one. <laughs> you guys have really run with everything that you've been, you know, you've had the opportunity to jump at, you have. And I really take my hat off to the way that you've dealt with challenges over the last few years. And, and it's obviously certainly paid off. But the way that you've you've conducted yourself and you managed your own mindset and you've grown, grown your mindset through, you've used the experience to grow as, as investors which is awesome. This is what it's all about. 
Um, so absolutely well done. You've, you've done phenomenally. And I look forward to what's to come and how um, you can utilise what you've done to, to really set yourself up and complete what you've done. Well, I guess parting words uh, we, I'd love to know from you guys is um, what would you either tell your younger self or somebody who's just starting out on this journey? What words of wisdom do you have? Um. I would say, um, looking back 20 years ago, <laughs> um, learn how to manage your money. Um, yeah. le- start thinking long-term um, rather than short-term or week-to-week yeah. um, because, you know, ha- getting yourself into property I think really does set you up um for life um learn like go and educate yourself about finances and don't be afraid to like put your hand and say you know i'm hopeless at finances um how does a mortgage work how does this work because um you know what i learned um through my family and parents has been oh you know you either go to school or you get a job there's no such thing as staying at home um, work hard, pay off your PPR, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and save your money, and put all your money in the bank. <laughs> um, yeah. Earning very yeah. minor yeah. little interest yeah. um, on that, and hopefully that will get you through to retirement. Um, to you know, I, yeah, and and yeah, the pension. Well, you know, is the pension reflective of the current cost of living? Well, no, um, definitely not. Um, and we've already, we've agreed that in our retirement we don't want to be having to sacrifice lifestyle no, um, to get a pension. Yeah. Um, we want to be secure. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to enjoy our retirement phase yeah. by travelling. And, um, and leave a legacy as well for, uh, for you know, our kids. Next generation. Yeah, great. So um, definitely, you know, don't stick to the boundary. Um, you know, really, really, I guess, um, you know, think long term. Don't think yeah. short term. Yeah, absolutely. Words of wisdom. And I guess if, if you don't know where to start or you don't know how a mortgage works and the nitty gritty, do not be embarrassed about that. We all started <laughs> off that way. It, but yeah. just make sure that you find out. I guess that's yeah. the, the crux of it. Well, absolutely amazing journey you guys have had. Thank you so much for sharing it with us today. I'm sure there's heaps and heaps of learnings in in what we've discussed over the last hour or so. Thank you very much for joining us. Hey, thanks for listening to Property Investor Tales. Remember to subscribe so you get notified every time a new episode drops. As you can guess, I love hearing people's property investor tales. So if you'd like to share yours, then please get in touch with me via email at propertyinvestortales at positivementor.com.au. We would also love your feedback and I would appreciate a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Remember, you can watch all of these podcasts over on YouTube at Positive Mentor or at positivementor.com.au. Until then, take care, happy investing, and bye for now.